Radio Show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We stand together and accept that we now live in a world transformed by Fukushima. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on UCY.TV Radio. We relentlessly engage every ear that listens. We expose and confront the complete lack of accountability for the nuclear industry. Consider social engineering programs to view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. The Age of Vision Radio Show creates a venue that all will choose. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action and save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Our actions matter. Every voice matters. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission radio show. Thank you for joining us. Today is September 2nd, 2016, and you know what that means? I think it's been something like 2,005 days since Fukushima has been ignored. And now we have the nuclear industry trying to teach us that it's just normal, perfectly normal to be radiated. Uh, today is call-in Friday. Let me give you the number right away. The number is 718 718- 717-8296 and I really appreciate you all being with us here uh, today on our show we have uh, two guest hosts and I hope they're both still with us uh, we have Dana Durnford and Michael from Primer Time. Michael are you still with us? Dana are you here? I am Yay. Okay, so Michael, you do know our call-in number. I'm hoping that you will give me a call back, the number 718-717-8296. Dana, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate you joining us on Call-In Friday. Here he is. There's Michael. Michael, are you with us? Hello? Oh, dear. Well, I can't seem to get him. So, Dana, uh, we have one hour, and the time flies by. So I really am grateful that you are joining us. Just as a quick reminder, would you remind people how you became kind of a public figure in this whole thing? I mean, I when I first found you, you were a YouTube vlogger. And things have gotten much more public since then. Uh, would you please uh, kind of brief people on the journey that you've taken in the last year or two years. Sure. I guess it's two or three or four, and now it's like yeah. a super long time. Like, oh, hello. Yeah, the first year I covered 9,000 headlines um, about Fukushima, and uh, they were live. You cover 50 to 100, sometimes more, each show. And so we flushed it out really well. And then we went out on expeditions. We've done five expeditions, 260 days on the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, from one end right to the other end, and we covered 15,000 miles, a couple hundred thousand pictures, miles and miles and miles of underwater footage. And um, we disseminated that on the Internet at my site, the nuclearproctologist.org. And so we have a a very rather long history. Then when I came ashore after five expeditions, 260 days on the ocean, I found myself getting arrested. And so I was arrested and vilified and demonized in the mainstream media in Canada for harassing uh, allegedly two nuclear scientists or two marine chemists. One is uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and the other one is from uh, University of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Now, I'm not allowed to mention their names uh, as part of this uh, hush-hush court order they have against me. This was about um, demonizing me, uh, vilifying me, and trying to to put these people back up on a pedestal. Now, these people are notorious lawyers, and so I called them out, got arrested for it. We're going to court uh, for trial in about two weeks 
after yeah. five uh, court appearances. The last what's, court, your, what's your possible conviction sentence? Like, what if you got convicted? Ten, ten years in jail. Lord, really? And what yeah. is the charge? What's the? Ex I mean, how, what are they saying that you did? Criminal harassment. Uh, criminal harassment. Well, I call it criminal harassment against nuclear puke machines, but it's criminal harassment. This was a wow. uh, law made up for stalkers. Just last May, actually. And these are public speakers. These are the two biggest public speakers in North America, and you're not allowed what, to criticize Jay Cullen, them. I can, I can say their names. It's Jay Ken Cullen Sol. and Ken Busler, and they are from Woods Hole Oceanographic. And what they did, they were out on the ocean testing water, saying, hey, there's just not that much radiation. The ocean's safe, folks, which they know it's disingenuous to test the water because fish is a thousand times more toxic, at least, because the animals uh, in the ocean... 15,000 times they bioaccumulate it, and shellfish right. would be 100, 120,000. I mean, some of, them, some of them, it goes anywhere from like a thousand times to 15,000, depending on the species. They need yeah. potassium, they need these trace sure elements. Do. There's not enough in the water, so over over time, they have evolved to bio to mass to magnify it by like a thousand times, so that they can live in the ocean water. And those little creatures identify instead of as potassium, which is what they're magnifying naturally. And they calcium. magnify and calcium. They magnify the radiation, the cesium one thirty seven, the cesium one, the, all of them. And so, eating a fish is actually at least a thousand time more toxic than drinking a gallon of water. It, and, and, an, that's and an adult fish would be 15,000 times. That's yeah. right. And these scientists know this and they are intentionally working to it's kind of like what's going on in the states here, don't you think, Dana, where we're talking about WikiLeaks exposing the DNC uh, election fraud. We're talking about WikiLeaks leaking instead of the election fraud. You know what I mean? Like we're not talking about like the real issue of the At fish all. is being contaminated. Now and in it's fact worse than that. Let me let me jump in because I didn't finish it off. Just that last statement um, mm -hmm. was I found less than a hundred species left uh, symmetrically throughout the entire coastline when you added them all up. Wow. Now in an average spot, you expect to find over five thousand fifty six hundred in the average spot, and other spots like. Uh, a Banfield, British Columbia, would have an, uh, another 1,800 species uh, more than the average. Uh, and I was just up to Banfield two weeks ago. got barred from the Banfield Research Institute. Just as, When he seen me coming, he come out and banned me. They didn't know who I was. Uh, uh, I was going to ask him why there was only 14 species instead of 7,200 species uh, that, uh, you know, I covered that whole coastline. And I'd done a four-hour video showing the video of the coastline in close detail and me driving right into that community with the boat just so people couldn't say I wasn't there because that's what people like to do. Oh, Dana wasn't there. But why would I post the GPS and the pictures, 2,000 pictures a day of the coastline if I wasn't there? You know, how how is that possible? And why would somebody do something like that? So it's it's just the industry trying to trick people and deceive people and, and seed some doubt and everything else. And these are unrelenting. These people are unremorseful. They don't care about anything, including their own loved ones. It's, it's really something, yeah. yeah. The brainwashing is just complete. I mean, Wendy... It's something else. Wendy Lambert was on Wednesday, and she lives in Hanford. We were talking... I mean, that was my focus with the interview, like... Because she said she lived in the tri city. She grew up there, and when she became an adult, she started questioning it. And it was like living in the Stepford Wives. Like, everybody there, if you question it, you're considered, a, you know, crazy, literally crazy. I mean, she had to move away. And it is shocking, the secrecy and the lies and the complete lack of concern i mean remember dana in 2013 we were being told there's a plume coming to the west coast a plume of radiation right. is going to hit the west Coast. so when the plume hit it turned into the blob <laughs> right that a thousand mile uh, and it's a, superheated blob a in mysterious the blob we have no idea oh it must be la nina let's blame the it on the women right. once and again. the animals are all dying of a mysterious pathogen or a mysterious virus but if you look at the Ebola, what was the first thing? They didn't know what it was, but they got pictures of it because it's just a virus. So they took a picture of it, and then they asked scientists, could they identify it, and it got identified as Ebola. But they can't seem to do that with the starfish. They can't seem to do that with the mysterious pathogens or the mysterious viruses. No pictures ever, no descriptions ever, no uh, research laboratory describing it ever. It's just these um, connotations and these conjectures.
And so that's not the journalism. That's not science, and that's not uh, they're, they're, real. They're working really hard. They really do they own the media. There was a story yesterday about how the Fukushima reactors, which you did a live stream. I was so grateful that you did. Uh, that the Fukushima reactors might restart again. Like <laughs> and the, in the article, the guy said there was a <laughs> nuclear reactor that had a meltdown. <laughs> and in all in the past tense, past tense, past tense. I as soon as I saw your live stream, I dug that article up. I looked at the link, and I literally <laughs> wrote this guy an email. Of which, of course, did, yeah. there's no I response. I, I did because, like, what what the heck? Like this guy's he's a but you know I looked into he's his Tucker background. Carlson's outfit, right? The Daily Caller we're talking about for anybody. He's the White House uh, press club too. On top of that, everybody knows who Tucker Carlson is, of course. And so here's Tucker you have Carlson's this, the bow tie guy. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. everybody knows who he is, whether they like him or not, but they know who he is. And uh, here he is, he's allowing these absolutely unbelievable, I mean, the buildings are completely destroyed. They, they blew apart, they detonated, they threw the reactor cores something like 3,000 feet straight up into the air, one of them, at Unit 3. This is unprecedented on our planet. Like Chernobyl was 600 uh, kilometers away from the ocean. Fukushima is right smack on the ocean. Right. Right, right smack there. It's With a just river going underneath the facilities right that. next to a right. mountain ridge that built actually it on pours the bed. water underneath the facilities. And right. how did you like that article? He said something like, what did he call the um, uh, ice sludge, the failed ice sludge machine? Uh, he, he made some remark about the, you know, around Fukushima, TEPCO actually built, they drilled in the ground and they tried to freeze the ground to keep the things from melting, to keep the radiation from pouring into the ocean. And I, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Dana, but what they've really discovered is that it turned the mud into sludge. It did not melt. It did not freeze anything. It turned the mud into sludge. And it became liquefaction, it, yeah. And it becomes liquefaction and the site is unstable. the foundations of the building. Like quicksand. It's like quicksand. You yeah. turn the site into quicksand, basically. Yeah, and it just continues to get worse because you keep pumping water in there. Is Michael out there? Go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry, Lonnie. Michael, are you with us? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. How you Yay. doing, Dana? I thought you dropped uh, off. I'm so glad you You know, us. it was strange as soon as, like, your song was almost done playing and you were about to give it, my device restarted. So it was just, <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect. Perfect. That's typical. Perfect. That's how, that's yeah, you know, uh, I, I think that's kind of sort of what I'd almost like to touch at and in, in conversely with what you're you're covering. You guys have a lot of, like, nuclear knowledge and everything. And there's not really a whole lot of people out there. I mean, the UCY audience and people may catch this like later on on YouTube or in some sort of shared podcast or something probably are, are now coming to like the realization that something's wrong. And they, they have to kind of reflect that like in the mainstream media, they are still talking about the ice wall like it's, it's the salvation. Like and I've it seen works. One, one story that showed that the ice wall is not working. And right. that was it. There's no, I, honestly, I think that, that a good percentage of the people think that, like, nuclear energy means that the, the nuclear power plant sends, like, little radiation through the, the, the electric lines into your house, and you plug your your TV into the into the That's socket right. and feed it off of radiation. They have no idea how it works. How they, it, it's, it. it's a massive subject. And That's true. Well, look, on this subject of this ice wall, here we have a story, August 31st. It's written in the oilprice.com, and it's quoted from this. It's another writer. It's called Zanab Katawali. I guess they're from a different country. But listen to what it says about the ice wall, and it is so so factually incorrect. The New York Times reported, and they reported off of this other person's story, on Monday that the Japanese government has funded a construction of a 320 million block of man-made Permafrost, that's what they're calling it, that would continue 100 feet underneath the Daiichi plant to solve the unrelenting flood of groundwater that has been headed into the damaged reactors. The project will stop the leak of radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean, which may continue at low levels to this day, the Times said. That is such false misinformation. We, the story has come out that the ice wall was a catastrophic failure, total failure. Well, I mean, if the power goes out, then they're going to lose everything they got so-called contained. But you can't contain rain and snow and everything indefinitely. It's going to spill over. Water will find its way out. 
even if it did work, but why would you build an ice wall? You built the ice wall because uh, the government would pay for it. If you built a normal wall, TEPCO would have had to pay for that themselves. TEPCO has spent over eight hundred million billion, sorry, Canadian so far, almost a trillion dollars so far. There probably is a trillion dollars that's, because that was 2015 figures. Um, so this is uh, extraordinary. We're talking about uh, Obama and America is going to spend a trillion dollars over the next decade upgrading the entire nuclear arsenal and fleet. Yet here's TEPCO on four buildings that uh, broke down. Now they got 30 million one-ton bags they cleaned up uh, from that. 30 million, that's far. If you put a bag in and each counting, truck. And counting, and yeah. counting, they're still oh, yeah. doing it like insane. This is a tiny fraction. Ants. It's a tiny I mean, fraction of what they need to clean up. Go ahead, Lenny. It, they're like little ants. They just put these things in the bag, stack them in, and they have no regard to what the net result is. It's, to be honest... I mean, I think you're right, Michael. Most Americans have no idea. And our listeners on YouTube... You might as well be talking about magic, seriously. I I, I think that in the last 40 years, this population has been dumbed down to where operating Velcro tennis shoes is becoming, you know, something that now not only needs sensitivity training, but also needs safety training and you know, you have to consider the ethical implications of the Velcro shoes. You know, I, I mean, that's that's what we've been focusing on versus, you know, a little bit of science knowledge that could show you that, yeah, building a gigantic refrigerator underground is kind of like not the answer. Michael, what part you know, of the country do you live in? I live on the Gulf Coast of Texas. Okay, so in your little neck of the woods, do most people, are they aware that Fukushima is still raging out of control and that it is a catastrophic event that is going to, that is affecting the entire planet? I, of most people in my area, no, no. Mm-hmm. Um, they would think that Fukushima was one of the cities we bombed in World War II or it was some <laughs> sort of like Japanese food dish or, or possibly a Pokemon. They, they have <laughs> What, what, what Fukushima is. And, uh, I, I would say of, of people I know, the only ones that know something about it would be because I showed them the video of, of Fukushima blowing up back in, you know, whatever it was. 2011, five, yeah. 2000, two, yeah, 2011. Everybody uh, ran away from that uh, reactor when it blew up. Right, and, Just, and it's almost surprising to me because I live... All right, so... The, the Gulf Coast of the United States is, you know, the third coast. It's a beautiful place, but it's also kind of like the United States dumping ground. I don't want to go as far as say it's like a toilet or anything, but you can do things uh, down here that you can't do anywhere else. And, and so there's chemical and petrochemical factories all up and down this area and pretty much all along the Gulf Coast up until you get to about Florida. And... Uh, so, Michael, let me uh, guys just interject. This industry. Uh, let me yeah, interject. Ahead. Yeah, the whole industry has been predicated upon no rules, no oversight, no checks and balances. It's not, but, it's not just the industry. It's, it's the entire culture. It's the entire mass consumption culture. That, right, that's that a better way of looking at it. But a, melter, a, a single melter reactor is worse than every uh, waste on the site. All the catastrophes, all the plastic, all the oil spills, all the chemical petroleum, all the pharmaceuticals released into the ocean. But if you actually look at America, just to back up what you said in that context, was that if you look at the coastline of America, it's nuclear dumps from the 40s, 50s, and 60s just off your coastline. If you look throughout your, co- well, uh, throughout your country... Let me interject. Not too far from me, there's a what is potentially the largest Superfund cleanup site waiting to happen at a at an Alcoa aluminum factory, you know, a, a facility, and uh, yeah, it, it will dwarf the the cleanup of all other uh, all, of all of them combined. And the only like- reason they're not doing it is because they keep a skeleton crew on. To, to say that it's actually still open, so they don't they, have to. They, they can't. Them. They can't clean up, uh, say, a landfill with nuclear waste in it. They can't clean up Hanford. You they would can't bankrupt clean this up either. They can't. Yeah, no, they can't clean no, it I know, but stuff. you can. You can clean it up. You can send in robots and start cleaning up, but you can't do that with nuclear because the robots will die too. Every nuclear 
uh, releases well, I would into say, the community. Dana, though, I will tell you this. Up in Hanford, they will tell you that they have cleaned up up there. They really, those people up there, while their oncology rates are off the charts, they have microencephaly babies all the time. The people up near Hanford in the Tri-Cities will unequivocally tell you. And, in fact, I think I've heard many people on the East Coast say, yes, they can clean up these sites. That's what the whole thing okay, well, is saying. Okay, let's take one that's, no, been, no, can't. No. That, that's totally been cleaned up. And, and is kind of like out of commission. And it's not even a nuclear reactor factory. It was making power or anything. Rocky Flats outside right. of... It was making the triggers, right. the 90,000 plutonium triggers. Tons, and the leftovers tons, tons. are buried yeah. here. Yeah. All, kinds of, all kinds of accidents, all kinds of... They've been litigation now for 40 years or something, and no one's ever That's won right. against them. It was, it was a great right. big employer to the people of, of, of that. The 90%. A, sing, a single reactor can kill the planet. As simple as that. A single a reactor, single reactor is starts killing off killing your country. Yeah. Let's just be clear. Fukushima is killing the planet. I mean, oh, but, honestly, but, it is. Honestly, wait, wait up. Wait see, up. see, plastic it's is too big, the, too big, right? The, you know, the, the radionuclides we're talking about are one ten thousandth, a millionth of a meter. The plastic, the pollution, stuff like this is much you bigger. Huge, that, many see, times bigger. You're talking so about it doesn't man. assimilate the same way, right? Go ahead. You're, you're, you're talking about what you, would, you might as well be talking about magic and hokey spokes and miracles. Yes, right. Yeah. And alien stuff because That's people have no idea what they're talking about. You now, getting back to Rocky Flats, that place has been closed down. They've done whatever they had to do. The trillion dollar, trillion and a half dollar, I think, what it was officially clean up. I mean, it cost building more than that than that monstrosity airport in Denver. That is now tract homes. They're they're selling right. like like three acre three acre home sites there on the on the property where that you know that had you know small nuclear detonations and whatnot that's right move along so, move along folks it's not going to harm you it's right just the whole like country is like that they, it's from the just nuclear insanity testing, uh, it's beyond 40, it's 50, like 60. And, and i mean I, i'm not knocking what you're doing by any means but i i think i think that you you guys know enough of this that you're almost you have a a a product that you almost have to preach to the choir because if you give this to anybody, Joe off the street, which is the audience you want to hit, right? I mean, that's what you that's what you want to. That, that you got to wake up more people because in the end, you got to have more people than they do. That's because true. if you you have to force your will on somebody, which you have, is why they're spending so much money on the brainwashing. We have article after article like that one I just cited: "New Hope for Nuclear right. Power in Japan." It's really? Not, it's no. not just the brainwashing. They have to they have to harass you through through legal means. They have to harass you through the police means or something like that. So there's honestly the the whole like nonviolent thing doesn't work. Because that's exactly what that's it's their, No, that's their playbook, right? They have a playbook, and if you don't know the playbook, the playbook's called The Art of War, and everybody uses it throughout the world. But that's their original playbook, uh, and then you can see the extrapolations that they use in the current technology that's available. And so you have to play those exact same rules all the time. You, you have to be willing to take the beating, to give a little beating. And you have to be willing to learn and understand and be able to the, dissect the it never takes and articulate it. I do. The man never take. The man never. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. That's why they arrested me, uh, because they had no choice. That was you the information. And, and I'm going to tell you what, dude. I, I totally respect your information, but I have to reiterate this point to to almost everybody else out there, outside of this, this small sector of people who actually know what the hell's going on and, and know what's going, what is is actually occurring. You're talking about magic. You got nobody knows what you're saying, and and, and I don't mean that in, in a in a insulting way or anything. Well, they, and I they know Joe, that by the time you listen to the whole stream, you but, but it, it's a subject matter that's blown everybody away. I, I uh, agree. It, like, look at it this it, way. Yeah, I, I, that's why I do what I do. That's why I work so hard is because I understand there's so few people. So generally, I'm targeting the people that are want to be active and so you educate them on how to be articulating and understand what the fables and the follies are. And But are you talking about something like 9,000 uh, facets of nuclear? You're talking about a million corporations dependent upon the industry. You're talking about millions of studies where every animal died for 70 years without fail. No animal has ever been cured. And you're talking about, uh, you know, I got 60,000 studies on how it's assimilated into plants and food and to water and to every aspect of your life and how 
difficult it is to aggregate it out of your body. It's, it's literally impossible because it becomes sequestered in your muscles, your organs, and your bones where it mutates to stem cells in your bones. That's why you see these vicious cancer. But ju generally what happens is there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies, illnesses, injuries that will show up before the cancer. So autism, Alzheimer's, dementia, there's diabetes, heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, adrenaline gland, but penile gland problems. Uh, that'll manifest and be diagnosed and, and will cause you to liquidate your assets long before the cancer shows up. But cancer will show up in some aspects. Like in Japan, say, there's supposed to be three out of a million children or people would have thyroid. Right now in a study on children alone, there was 13,600. Not out of a million, but out of 40,000. Well, not so, only that, Dana. They were under-reporting. There's stories that the doctors there are under-reporting the thyroid still effects. So, uh, like uh, stillbirths and then uh, deformed babies and, and fetuses. And There was 100,000 abortions after Chernobyl because of these kind of issues. Okay, so like with stillbirths and stuff like that, now you almost get into something where you can actually push that to the, to the average consumer and, and even like to the beginning. Diabetes. Act. There's yeah, six yeah, times more breast cancer around a nuclear power plant. There's double leukemia for children around a nuclear power plant within a 15-mile zone. But we should be studying diabetes. You should be studying autism. Right. You should be studying dementia. You should be studying these kinds of autoimmune deficiencies that are well known through the animal studies to show up long before and human studies. I mean, they gave uh, 800 pregnant women in a Stanford experience, uh, experiment at a hospital. They gave 800 pregnant women. Uh, what they call vitamin drinks and vitamin shots, but these were americium, natunium from a chain reaction. When that was that? Got, that was in the 50s and the 60s. Right. They had carried out many experiments similar to that, by the way, folks, on, on a population that was retired, on senior citizen, that senior citizen home, and school children feeding them radioactive porridge at orphanages is another notorious study. That, right. that has finally been released. And all of yeah. John Goffman's work is just completely ignored. Right. Arthur Tamplin, Dr. Linus right. Pauling, right. their work For is... Sure. I, I actually heard this... Uh, who was it? Uh, it was an interview with somebody yesterday. Uh, it was uh, an interview with Jasko. And he said, oh, well, we ha we just are doing the studies. Uh, we've only been studying radiation since the 80s. Now, Jasko said this. The former commissioner of the NRC literally said, well, we're just discovering how harmful radiation is in the 80s. I played a clip of him uh, two days ago of him saying they were getting lethal doses at Fukushima back when it happened. They know they are. Oh, and yeah. No, and I played other people saying it. So they knew the back then. See, but then they... Go ahead. This is, so Go let ahead. me let me give the number out in case anybody listening wants to call in and ask Dana a question. The number seven one eight seven one seven eight two nine six. You're listening to Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show with Dana Dernford and uh, Michael from Primer Time, my guest host here on uh, the Age of Fission Radio Show. So Dana, you actually have well, Mike this makes some great points though, where nobody understands That's the topic right. at all, right? And that uh, it's easy to understand the common stuff like plastic or chemical spills in the community or aluminum factories that have uh, polluted those communities. Like a coal plant, you can live alongside of it for 20 years, you get sick, and move away, you'll probably be okay. Drive past a nuclear power plant on the highway, on the way to that coal plant, and suck in one of those radioactive atoms, a single atom. I can put two million on a head of a needle, but you can't see it. But you suck that into you, you got 1,800 diseases will show up, one of them, or 10 of them, before the cancer, 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. But it's going to show up because it sequesters in your organs, your muscles, and your bones. It's going to show up for sure. All the studies, every animal would die of multiple tumors, not just a single tumor. Now, we're drinking and eating multiple. We were breathing in California. There was 1,500 radioactive atoms per cubic meter of air, so 9 feet by 9 feet by 9 feet. And this is where you're standing, say, roughly. And so you were breathing in California about 360 particles a day. These are hot particles. Reactor 3 in Japan was 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet, but 4,500 times worse than all the reactors combined. And the reason being is they used reclaimed plutonium, reclaimed uranium as fuel. They took that from missiles, and America used to have something like 48,000 missile silos throughout the country, 
releasing radioactivity into those areas all the time. They got all the waste sites throughout the country. These are holding sites, not actual waste sites, not repositories. They don't know what to do with it anywhere on the planet. Some people have buried it on the planet, but that is not the solution because if it goes into a meltdown, and it will in the 10 years or 100 years or 1,000 years, it, the metals will, will go, when they touch each other as the stuff decays, and we have a chain reaction happening on the planet deep inside of Earth, and that it will cook at 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures like the sun, and it'll burn indefinitely. Now, we normally attack it with boron, which is a way of stopping the neutron um, dividing. And so we can't do that when it's down into, like, what happened at WIP, a waste repository in America? They put it all on the ground, 55 football cavern-sized, uh, football field-sized containment areas. They had a truck fire, allegedly. And then they abandoned 55 football fields. They didn't get on the other side of the truck and put it out. They abandoned 55 football fields. But 10 days later, they claimed they had a radiation release in another section. They hadn't went back down to that mine, so they had lied about everything. Now, they can't, like, I came out with a video, and TV attacked me right away with it. showed clips of me and said I was like a, a kooky guy. But I said, you'll never get back down there. And it'll take, if you do, you'll spend billions and billions, and they have in the last couple of years, and they still can't get down there, and they keep claiming they can, but no, the whole place is coated with radioactive material. It's a death sentence. Okay, well, now, now, think about, I just, I'll just i end it on that, Michael, let you jump in. Your suit will protect you from radioactive particles, but this material is gamma shine, it's neutron beams, it's x-rays, it's beta uh, emitters that are very powerful it'll go through bricks and, and walls and everything else and so your little tiny suit same as at Fukushima same as at Hanford same as at any nuclear site on the planet is not protecting any of them you can't protect them you gotta worry look at the people in Chernobyl they dressed themselves in handmade lead suits right they, they drilled a hole in, in thin lead and they wrapped their bodies in it and ran it on the roof for 20 seconds and then went home never went and he died usually a couple of weeks later there were 600 helicopter pilots died at Chernobyl That's that you right. won't see at the UN site. Well, not only that, they Go deny ahead, that it happened. Well, yeah, like, Absolutely. I mean, that's kind of what, what the main thing is, is, is. Who's making that sacrifice? Because, I mean, like, the Russians threw, like, what, like 650,000 people or something like that at, at Chernobyl over, like, 10 years? Right. I, I mean, like, initially it was, like, 350,000, and then, like, another 300,000 went in and cleaned it's, up. It's script is 600,000 soldiers right away, but another 400,000 tradespeople. Coffee Anna well, you know, one of the said there was three million really children from disabilities. Of, that's right. I mean, one of the things we're getting aware of, though, is the radioactive contamination along the entire northern hemisphere. Look at all the nuclear power plants in Europe. Look at all the, not just the power plants. And, the and there's studies facilities. showing how that comes into the community from the ocean with the fog and with the rain and how cancers and autoimmune deficiencies increase in those areas. When they shut down two nuclear power plants around uh, in America there a number of years back, the first thing they noticed was a decrease in infant mortality. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because these places are releasing it constantly, venting it out of those big stacks. It's just the stupidest thing imaginable what they're doing in the community. They, should, they shouldn't be on the planet, let alone in the community. Well, this is the thing. This is the issue. And, you know, Michael can attest to this. Around our country, people... I actually heard this new phrase recently. We're called nuke mongerers, Dana. <laughs> good. Instead of... Good. Yeah, good. thank you. Because Same, we tell, tell a friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Because really the reality is this is really the most dangerous thing on our planet. And we're in the stew. I mean, the denial... The, they spend more money denying. You can go... One online. can kill a planet. We got four melted down in Japan. Yeah, One can well, kill a planet. So and, and not, we're not yeah, but, but we're spending but we're spending seventy million dollars on high school football stadiums. This not doesn't mean anything. Then. Well, well it, it might not now, but it will. It will in a couple of years. You can't get away from it. You can't hide it. You can't ignore it. You can't pretend it didn't happen. You can't pretend it won't affect you. You can't because look at the Techa River where they evacuated seventy five hundred communities. But also look at the Philippines. Look at Tonga. Look at Fiji, look at uh, Vanuatu, look at Mexico. Look at the, These were all in the Pacific Ocean, all experienced in the last couple of years, storms in excess of 200 miles per hour without losing speed after pass through their country. We've seen the Philippines lost 41 provinces. It leveled it. It took 30 million uh, coconut trees and turned it into projectiles, gusting at 225 miles per hour. We get that wind on our coastline, we're done. That'll knock down, that'll be the big bad wolf. It'll knock down everything flat. 
you won't be able to, like in British Columbia where it's all trees, you won't be able to drive on a highway for, for years if a storm like that comes through. You'll never be able to clean it out because every community will be chock full of it. But not only that, you will level every building in British Columbia if we get hit on this coast with that kind of wind. And we've never seen this on this planet before. That's because you look at the ocean, a glass of water should have four point, um, I'm sorry, a billion creatures in a glass of salt water. Now, the, the extinction event we see playing out in the Pacific is all the animals are starving to death. We've seen a half a million murs, common murs, that can dive up to 600 feet, just starve to death up the coastline several months ago in Alaska and British Columbia. We've never seen anything like that before. They never had parasites. They never had diseases. They never had infections. They never had illnesses. They never had injuries. They starved to death. But what was really interesting about those studies was that in their tracks of their throats and that, they didn't even find the microscopic animals. And so uh, a glass of salt water, look at it this way, a glass of salt water has a billion creatures. If you dip your finger into that glass of salt water, you're going to bring out several hundred uh, creatures. So a bird does the same thing because he's dipping his beak underwater all day looking for food. And he swims in that environment. They didn't even find that in his feathers, the tracks, the, the microscopic world. So this is why the pictures of the coastline are naked. is because the 4.2 million other species that are also in the ocean uh, were wiped out also. This, we've seen the squid are gone, the herring are gone, the anchovies are gone, the, the krill is gone. The migratory birds are gone. I counted 11 species out of over 300 species. So there were 30,000 insects. I only counted around 30 species. And, and out of the highly visible species, I only counted less than 100 species out of the, the 5,600. But there's 6,500 invertebrates without the backbones that would be living in tandem. So in your tidal zones, you would have 600 species of algae. And that's where those 6,500 invertebrates would hide away from the sun and the harshness when the tide goes out. But at the same time, the migratory birds, the animals, the coastline animals in particular, would have been dependent upon those zones, those tidal zones, like they have been through millenniums. These now, now to top it all off, you got to think about when I done the whole coastline for 260 days. I'm looking at the Rocky Mountains, and now it takes 5,000 years for that ice pack that is now missing to come back. Now nobody's reporting on that, but that ice water that's missing from the mountains. This is why you can't ignore it anymore because the water is, uh, ice is missing from the mountains. That would regulate your streams, your estuaries, your rivers, your coastline during drought and during summer times and stuff like that. That is a natural way of life. It will take 5,000 years for that cycle to reboot if, if it ever reboots. That's because the tritium doesn't allow the ice to crystallize. And until that is gone, you won't have ice there. So it'll is be that about what a it is really years. the tritium? Because the, it's the combination in the water. The I wondered way. about that because we had read that the ice in uh, Greenland is hate. melting faster than anything they had ever predicted. Yeah, 3,200 polar bears in the Antarctic starving to death. I know. Right? Well, yeah. I've had, there's a YouTuber who actually We've never seen nothing like this. the Alaska recreational thing, and she catches every once in a while she'll find you a she, her last video on this uh, bear it was so sad it was like too weak to actually there was no fish in the stream a there was no salmon going upstream and he's standing there super weak just like wobbling over trying to find something it was really sad i, I mean, went right i went right up to seals literally nose to nose taking pictures and i told terry to back away i couldn't look at the seal i couldn't look it in the eye anymore and I put those pictures up at my website. The seal was destroyed. Its skin, its fur is destroyed. Its body give is destroyed. They never even so tried to get away from me. I've never David, seen give this. Give your website uh, address so that the people nuclear can go. org. You're going to put T-H-E in front of it. The, the nuclear proctologist.org. Yeah. And just so just I, my, do, my job is basically self-imposed to uh, dissect a nuclear narrative, back it up with the documentation, the information, the peer review studies. So you can't call someone a lawyer until you can prove they're a lawyer definitively. It has to be proven definitively. But I'm, you know, I've done this a thousand times now. And so I put that stuff up on the internet. At 300 of those videos, I had to take down with a court order. But why I was in jail for 12 hours, ghost accounts took down two videos that I was accused of making salacious remarks. These were political hyperbole. Where you, you make a remark where you think someone should be hung. Now, they tried the year before two different times to have me arrested, the same people. Then they stacked those up for 2015. I was still on the ocean. I was gone for five months at one stretch. And then I've done the final expedition on the West Coast only, the open ocean. I took an incredible, inconceivable amount of beatings doing this whole thing. But the West Coast was the most terrifying thing imaginable. I spent times when I couldn't eat for 24 hours. It was so rough. 
with four, uh, three beach lines and the anchor line with cannonballs on it, trying to hold my boat, hit away, can't get out of there, nowhere to hide. But we have to do this job. We've done every 20 miles of the coastline, right from Alaska all the way down to the other end of Canada. And this was relentless, obsessive, that I had to see the whole coastline and document it in 1,000 pictures or 2,000 a day and underwater footage and bird counts and insect counts. And so when I say you can't ignore what happened and what's happening and what's going to happen, that's what I mean. You can't ignore it no matter who you are, how dumb you are, or how ignorant or incompetent you might feel you are. You're not. You can learn any and all of this easily. That's the point of what I do. Right now I'm creating a 10-video series that starts off with the entire history of nuclear right back from the beginning, and that'll educate people on their own. And before I even talk about Fukushima, I'll do 10 videos in a series. I'll be selling them at my site, or they'll be up on the Internet for free, I'm sure. And I'm not going to restrict it. But and I don't restrict everything I got is free. Everything on my website is free for everybody to go make documentaries and monitorize it. And that you can find more of my material at the Beautiful Girl my, by Dana on YouTube, Beautiful Girl by Dana. You'll connect over from uh, my website with those videos you'll get to my site and you'll find video presentations where I use the most elaborate software imaginable the most the most incredible equipment imaginable to tell you that story in, in a one hour presentation or just a one hour screaming fit who knows what the mood is going to bring today I mean last night I had to do a stream last night because some idiot some moron in journalism has got everybody out there saying oh they're going to restart the reactors in Japan and I can't just sit there and allow that to happen for another hour or minute. I had to come out. Okay, but, but see, this is where it is. Dude, they're gonna, they're, they are going to tell the lies, and they are going to shut you down at, at every point. It, That's right. Th not there's no... There's, they can't. Not anymore. It's not, it's not even started, man. I mean, honestly, no, you're still I alive. Have a I have a, that's not, you're still alive. Me, they, they can kill me. It don't matter. I have a thousand videos on the internet that tells each one of them tells their story. And that people will be able to rally from that knowledge. Right? Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. From being a race, I mean, I, I don't mean that in a in a bad way. You're in the same I, boat. I, I, I'm I'm fully aware of it, man. That's just PR firms. That's just PR firms. Always don't mind them. It's PR firms. That's all. Fully aware of it. But what I'm saying is, is this has to stop. The, the information you gave is number one overpowering and, and, and it's damning to anybody who put, puts any kind of brain to it but it has to stop and yeah, that's honestly you're if you're getting a lot of harassment and, and w whatever you consider harassment I mean honestly constantly you, under attack you know, yeah constantly under siege you haven't been beat up and your car hasn't been run off the road yes already. he actually he has yeah. been challenged and threatened I mean Dana's physically uh, and then I've been my, my vehicle on the way down to court uh, I didn't make it to court I almost died on the highway the back tire almost came off wow. yeah no 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 weird stuff has happened to me no. at all uh, if, if, my boat if, was if, slashed if, my boat if, was slashed if, and I almost drowned if you can do the math on this and you can see that you're being you're in danger for your yeah, information yeah they're going to kill me I, I don't doubt that at some point that's why I say I got a thousand presentations out there, even though they took well, down three hundred on my site. Well, killing him too. I mean, this is the other thing they put out. Demonizing lies about the media Dana, nonstop, and then just straight journalists uh, the actually just take even alternative journalists have like taken information for, of these lies and just repeated it like a freaking parrot. It's it's so outrageous. I mean, this is, but the denial. See, this is the one thing they can't do. They can't deny the death it's causing. It is going. It is. We don't swear have to deny the death. Causing. They don't have to deny the death it's causing because they don't have to talk about it. They'll they'll give you more football. They'll give you more celebrity on on dope. It, it won't. Yeah, they'll do that for a while. That's the, the original Michael, but it won't last forever because the the death of the insects, the death of the Pacific coastline, the animals, the marine life, the birds, the flora and the flora. No, that uh, you got that three billion people on the planet dependent upon that. That's fifty percent of the oxygen on the planet. On top of that. That's and that—that right. that is the basis of the food chain, the oxygen, and the carbon sequestering chain. We can't okay, ignore so it, and the way it's manifesting like is why I say that. Go ahead. Mike. There's like 40 million people killed during World War II, and honestly, World War II, w when you get down to it, was a great big fight against the money system. If this is the the absolute control, I mean, beyond the money system, because the money system is everywhere. This is this is end all, be all control. Protesting doesn't do anything. Educating people doesn't do anything because they're going to kill half, half the planet. 
Yeah, it's an ecocide and a genocide. This is, uh, they're allowing it to carry on like it is because they feel they'll lose complete control and trust and that there'll be pandemonium and chaos and like all the Hollywood predictions, right? I don't think we live in that society anymore. I think that animal instinct is still there, obviously. And like we're privileged. I'm in Canada, so I don't speak for the whole world, obviously. Uh, I'm way too privileged. Uh, even compared to America, I'm extraordinarily privileged. I don't have to lock my doors. I don't have to. I can walk down the street. Nobody's going to cost me. No one's going to go into my house. Okay, and so now, now you're getting at another why people can't handle what, what you're saying or, or maybe right. don't hear that's why I try to educate them. Well, yeah. our media is full of, of that. And and honestly, it does happen. I wouldn't want to live in an inner city area in a big, you know, in, in, a, in a big place. It's, I don't know, over half a million people. I wouldn't want to live down there. Um, it, it's not safe for that in the United States. But, I mean, this is just like, yeah, it's the it's the end-all event probably in all, in all actuality once it, it's unstoppable and... I mean, yeah, just it, in it, five years. Go ahead, Mike. Well, okay, just in five years, but I mean, it's amazing. What are you doing see? Yeah, we, we, like mean, that's why I say this acceleration. That's the problem. Yeah, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid those supercell storms either. We've never seen them on the planet before. We've seen them in mountain passes where there's 200 miles an hour wind or something like that in adverse conditions, but we haven't seen it where it's 100 miles wide takes out the Philippines, 41 provinces, goes across the Pacific and slams into Vietnam and doesn't lose much speed. It never lost any speed going through the Philippines. And and these numbers are, um, we, we see it on the Discovery Channel where they talk about Mars might be like that 200, 225 mile an hour winds and people were like big, huge uh, destruction paths. We actually had that on our planet in the last couple of years. All of these were in the Pacific Ocean. That's the only spot we saw it. But that's because we killed it and that the radiation doesn't stop creating energy. It's just going to get hotter and hotter and an accelerated pace. And so when the typhoons and everything are picking this stuff up to become supercharged because the, the typhoon is pulsing every second like a perpetual machine. But think about uh, radioactive isotope. If you put it in your body, I can read it with a Geiger counter, certain types of Geiger counter outside your body because it's pulsing right through all your DNA, your bones, your organs, your muscles every second out to the garter counter, see? And so in the storm, it's the same way, but it doesn't have those restrictions of uh, muscles and fat and bone and everything else and, and liquids and stuff. And so in the ocean, it, it still does that. So everything, even if it's not ingesting it in the ocean, is being pounded with it. And the first things we see happen with that is um, sperm uh, gets destroyed. And because humans take so long to reproduce and see generations down the road, if you look at Fallujah, in Iraq, after the Iraq war, you know, in the Iraq war, they fired 5.5 million rounds a month for nine years to get 10,000 bad guys. 5.5 million rounds a month, just one month to get 10,000 people would seem pretty stupid. But 5.5 million rounds every month for nine years, what does that say about us? Cha-ching. Well, I mean, That's ching war profiting. Millions dead, millions about. missing, millions in refugee we camps. It's, not, it's beyond war profiting. Orphans. It's, but anyway, it's, it's all Fallujah. about killing somebody who's got the opportunity right. to they upset use... the apple cart. That's the whole idea behind the war. It's, they already make all the money and it's make genocide. all the nukes. They make the guns for both sides. The right. idea is to eliminate the best and brightest of the plebe class so they, they do not it. threaten they, the apple cart. They use, and uh, honestly, uranium. It, it's, and, it's and no, absolutely. Your, they use whatever your, they can, dude. It? They use whatever they can. They'll, 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 80, they'll burn you. They'll, they'll shoot you twice. Eighty-four percent of the children born in Fallujah were just lumps of flesh, because they had used so much depleted uranium there. This was a, a known fact that they had used seven hundred tons in. How do you stop? Uh, how do you stop this? I well, mean, it's it's all made. That's at, really at the Dallas end of it. The Manifest, end all be Dallas all of this. Oklahoma. Yeah, the, no, the but, but I mean, but, but wait, wait, wait up, man. Bombs. Go ahead. How, how do you stop this? That's that's the problem. If there's how who is who is behind it? Who is who is in charge of it? Who pushes the button that says if this nuclear plant goes online and you know and then at that point, honestly, protest all you want. There's 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 two thousand guys that work at it. Protest all you want. There's two thousand guys that work at that nuclear plant that have to pay for their new Tahoe and their bass boat and their kids' autism treatments and whatever else they have to do that they can't put it together. Well, they get double wages. The American they... people yeah. need like something a little more, a little more to akin to to like slapping a screaming child. This is 
Well, you can't, like you say, you can't give up just because it seems insurmountable. You can't walk away it, because it, it seems... No, you can't, you can't, but, but you have to analyze like what you seriously have an, an opportunity to do, and there's really... Well, honestly, let's say let's just say they said, okay, you yeah, yeah here, 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 here's the, Dana, here's the keys to every nuclear plant and in, in, in weapons facility storage and all that in the country. What do you do? You still need to, like, they're still going to run. You can't just go in there and turn them off. It's a huge in, entire process that brings in more people. That's not the way. Yeah, no, we got yeah, it for life. Yeah, insurmountable. We got it for life, Michael. You're right. We got it for life. You can't get rid of it. You can't throw it away. You can't put it on the moon. You can't stick it out somewhere else. We don't have that right to do that anyway. Well, we do produce 4,340 peer review academic studies daily here in North America, and that would turn some of the horsepower there into coming up with solutions. If we were to get rid of the GMO and then encourage everybody and give everybody free seeds, organic seeds, and let them plant that throughout the community, it would sustain the animal kingdom what's left if you gave and would help foster seeds, future they try to eat them thinking bacteria. They like, like corn nuts or something, man. We're looking you're, at you're dealing with like like a like a population that's dumbed down. Hey, they, they got no it idea what you're saying. It is only at the crux of our. Uh, if we seen a, a meteorite coming at us, what would we do? We would would we all just bow our head and say frigate, or would we try to stop it? Would we rally this uh, planet? Uh, well, that's, that's what I'm okay. saying. I mean, if we had an alien attack, would we rally the planet? Yes. That's not. That's, that's what I'm hoping anyway. Yeah. You can't stop it. You, you can, there is no stopping any sort of but you global try, right? Well, you don't know. You, not that you, can, you can't stop it or change it. Or this is what it. I think. I think we have to face it so that we can create the solutions. Right now, we have nothing but 70 years of denial. So we have 70 years of not only denial, but being like a two-year-old, smearing this shit all over the walls, all over the crib, everywhere. And they have never once acted like adults and said, this is a really serious issue. We have to figure it out. And uh, on that is what I believe we're going to... We will have this. We are going to have a mass movement where billions of people on this planet are going to be in shock and horror in less than 10 years going, we need money to stop with the wars and start figuring out how to save the shreds of what we have. Well, we don't send our children. Planet. Like, we just, it's an educational thing where we're indoctrinated with this machine. But think about, like, I look at the world uh my way, I guess. Like, if I'm driving down the road and I see a terrorist gunning down all kinds of people, I'm just going to run him over. I don't give a fuck about him. I'm going to run him over. I'm going to get out and piss on his head. I don't give a fuck about him. I'm not going to wait for the police to show up and solve that issue. He's getting... I'm going to smack him into a side of a building at 60 miles an hour. He's not going to be hurting anybody ever again. Problem solved. I'm not going to I'm not going to be indoctrinated to run and hide and cower and pretend that, I, that only somebody with a suit on and a and a gun on their hip can solve an issue when anybody driving by could have solved a friggin' issue and then have that used now to, to demonize everything on the planet. And like you say, I, it's people like myself and people like you who are willing to speak out and have an opinion and have an educational, informative uh, broadcast that will make the difference ultimately. But that's what we got and that's all we got, but it's not that's insurmountable. Right. And it's and enough. It's, it's enough. Hitting. You know it's what enough. we are we are enough, Michael. I agree. I mean, yeah, it seems huge. Well absolutely but... we're enough. We're 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 ninety nine point nine percent of the planet. Absolutely we're enough. But we had the, there's one message that that really destroys this all and, and it's this false concept of nonviolent revolution and that that's the biggest joke. Well, I, I, I mean, I got for that what, you, violent, what you, you know? said today, from just the information that, that's come out today, if, if this was like translated into a fashion that people can understand and, and they, they get a, a grasp of how this whole thing works and what's going on, there is blood knee deep in the streets tomorrow. And actually, probably not that much blood because there's not that many of them. But. That's right. There are not the, That's and what we original need is reaction. Yeah. Subjectors. You settle down after a while, though. Well, we need conscientious objectors. We need people to refuse to work for Raytheon. We need the scientists to con refuse to lie about the facts. I mean, the secrecy. I saw a story this morning about some guys in Utah. Huh? But look how much Raytheon pays, and 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 what. what what you can buy with that, and and I mean, it's even deeper than than just this, the nuclear stuff. You know, it's the consumer culture. It's it's Christ. It's, well, it's worse than slavery. I mean, 
for, for us, it's worse than slavery. At least if you were, you know, you were back. Have two roads, back right? In slave days, they had to feed you and clothe you and, and give you some sort of medical care and, and provide for your entertainment in the off hours and whatever. Now you have to pay for all of that. And you're too busy worrying about. That's right. Honestly, yeah. making. This is the original. I, I went through well, these emotions originally, Mike. You, you remind me of me originally, 100%, where you feel. You know, there's so many ways that you can't break through. But what I decided to do was go ahead and break through. And so I've been at this steady for several years. And I took it to extremes where I went and done 260 days on the ocean, uh, you know, on my own. And uh, originally I had three people on the coastline. I, I, I gathered up enough people and enough money to go do it. And it was a daunting challenge. It seemed impossible. It was insurmountable. But yet i done it. And I, that is up at my website, published already. Not all of it, but the majority is up there. The most important parts of it are certainly up there, and I broadcast it. Now, I do presentations pretty regularly, and it's been a rough year for me coming off the ocean, getting arrested, and everything else that followed. But I'm still producing these presentations, and anybody can study that presentation, that documentary, one-hour documentaries for one hour, two hours, three hours, and they will understand all the basics. And over time, over months, a couple of months, your brain... Uh, be a, is able to handle it, is able to coordinate it, and you become part of that. Uh, and that's all it really takes. Look, remember what happened to Rupert Murdoch? Yeah, but okay. They, so let's say everybody's educated about it. There's still the people who who well, mom do and this. dad works there. That's right. Mom and dad works there. You're going after their family members, their friends, their neighbors, their communities, their um, their uh, social networking uh, environment. And so you have to indoctrinate that part of the environment so that their own loved ones turn on them, their own friends turn on them, their own neighbors turn on these people in a, in the right way, in an educational way, where they say, hey, you told me it was like a banana. Turns out every dog died for the last 70 years in every study at Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. And it's just these simple sentences that you borrow. I, I think that, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely the, the most ineffective manner to get anything solved. You just mentioned. Oh, that's the only one I, left. I, I, no, 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 there's not. That's not the only one left. That's the only one left if you follow the damn rule book, dude. The rule book was meant to keep you in line. The, no, 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 no. This is, this is not. Think, this Michael? is not. Honestly, I yeah, I think people yeah, should, ahead, and it's not just this issue. This issue feeds into everything else. There's no escaping none of this. None of this. These people who own these these massive nuclear corporations, Exelon and GE, and everybody who does all this, look what else they run. They run prisons. They run the they run food companies that that poison everybody. It's and, and if you think that there is no other you, thing... You take but, down the head of the snake, the whole snake falls. You take down the whole damn thing in a fashion that makes the Indians of the Old West you take drool. down the head. You take the head off the animal, and then the animal take, falls down. Animal. That's you what we're looking to, at. Nu nuclear is the head of the animal. So, so again, Michael, the, here you are again, uh, advocating violence. <laughs> I'm, I'm, advocating, I'm advocating the only thing that works. Is, and <laughs> that's why it, I hear that's you, why man. It's no, I hear you. I'm just look. look seriously, they'll come arrest me. They'll be on my door in they 30 minutes. They will come and arrest you, Dana. You'll get I mean, you can't talk over. like that in Canada, Michael. If you get, no. that's exactly what you get, David get did. It. And he well, got you know charged with aggravated assault. That's an illegal act in Canada. You know who I am. Like, so guess what? You guys, on my show. I have to call this to an end. We have 30 seconds left. Good show, though. Enjoyed it. I hope that we can repeat this, Michael. You're a great guest host. So are you, Dana. I hope you guys will join us because Michael. You bring an element into this that is just so not me. And Reminds I love me of me it. when I was younger. I love track. it. I love it. So we have 20 seconds left. Please Good go stuff. to uh, the, nu the nuclearproctologist.org. Look at the work that Dana Durnford has uh, sacrificed himself to do. And my, please do listen to Primer Time on ucy.tv. Very interesting. I do listen to it, although I don't understand a lot of it. Put your courage feet on. Take some action. And thank you for joining us.
KJM against 